Hey everyone, it's Moss. I'm I'm here alone. And Alice couldn't make it today for reasons I'm not going to disclose. But Cactus might join in at some point. I'm not sure. Haven't got hasn't gotten back to me yet. But today we're just going to be doing more of the origin series. So yeah, I don't know how long this video will be, because for some reason my recorder says I only have 4.7 gigabytes left, so hmm. we'll see. So yeah, I'm just going to keep an eye on that while we are doing this. Just switch over to these tabs <laughs> and keep an eye on that. There we go. Yeah, sorry if it sounds at all weird, but I'm just going to check where we left off. Alright, we left off on the Iron Golem. If you guys want to see the ones that I'm passing through right now, they're in the previous videos. Alright, here's Iron Golem, and we read that one in the last video, so I'm just going to read this one. Taros. Taros are the guardians of the plains, minding their own business, grazing the grass. Charge dash. If there's a blue A, that means that it's an active ability. You use it with G or whatever. Or whatever you have set. An ancestral ability of the Taros. It allows them to fly out of cover and attack their enemies with swift movements. Grass graze. You can eat grass to gain some food. Vegetarian. You can't digest any meat. Unwieldy. The way your hands are formed provide no way of holding a shield upright. Habitat advantage. You feel more ho at home in the plains. Hooved. Your legs and feet are shaped different, causing you to move faster, but you swim slower. Tougher. Wait, tough hide. Tougher hide allows you to take more hits. Horned. Having horns deals damage back to attackers if there is time to recover from the last attack. Trashling. Trashlings did not have much to eat, but as their species aged, they began learning how to eat more and more things. They can now eat almost anything. Trash-like appetite. Active ability. Use with left button. That might be right button for you guys, because I have the left button set for my use, but, but we'll, we'll see. Unhealthy food. Wait, you're able to eat anything, just about everything. Unhealthy food. Because of an unhealthy diet, you are weaker, slower, and have less health. A metal stomach. Due to eating so many foods, you're not able to be poisoned or get sick. Huh, that'll be nice. I mean, did you guys see when I died to that witch? Well, technically I died to the skeleton, but if it weren't for that witch, I'd still be in season four. of my series where I try and beat the um, of where I try and beat the enter dragon for the first time but I'm doing it in hardcore go check out that after this cause I really do try hard and yeah I'm gonna do it it's just gonna take me a while cause I only really do that with aloe because I'm very insecure about my humor and aloe is a lot funnier than I am. <laughs> Composter. When, e when eating, you have a chance to create bone meal. In this video, we're just going to go until the impact is high. Alright? I don't know how long that'll be, but we're just going to do it. 
Goatlin leaped from peak to peak with incredible agility and jump height. Dash. Goatlin have legs that are well equipped for a short burst of speed. Horned. Having horns deals damage back to attackers. There's time to recover from the last attack. Tailwind. You're a little bit quicker on foot than others. Strong ankles. You are able to jump higher by jumping when sprinting. Vegetarian. You can't digest any meat. Unwieldy. The way your hands are formed provide no way of holding a shield upright. Acrobatics. You never take fall damage no matter from what height you fall. Sorry, just tweet. Anyway. Arachne. Humanoid arachnid half-breeds. Arachne. One sec. Ow. Arachne are the size of a man with the dexterity and nimbleness of a spider. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Climber. The fine bristles on the arachne's legs allow them to climb up walls. Many eyes. The arachne's eight eyes are all adapted to darkness and allow them to see clearly even with very little light. Venomous bite. The arachne's fangs contain venom and very and every bite is a chance to poison their opponent. Webslinger. Use with G. Arachne can command spin web can on command spin webs in which their opponents will be trapped for a short while. Brittle. The Arachne's exoskeleton cannot support armor heavier than iron. Bottomless stomach. A human sized spider does not come without consequences. A massive amount of food is required to sustain the Arachne. Fragile exoskeleton. The Arachne's exoskeleton is vulnerable to damage. Her health is less compared to a regular human's. Banshee. Banshees are spirits whose cries can shatter glass and drive people to suicide. They are also seen as omens of death in mythology. Sonic Shriek. Banshees are renowned for their supersonic cries, which can cause blood vessels to burst. Press G for a short peer and for a short period, you'll find yourself dealing far more damage. Ethereal. Banshees possess the ability to become intangible at will. This one you use B, meaning they cannot be affected by foes in the physical realm. This, of course, comes with cooldown, activated with the secondary power key, minus B. Hexed. Banshees are known for their cursing prower prowess. Every time they're hit, there's a small chance that the attacker will be Inside, who a fate of slow, agonizing death. <sighs> that terrifies me. Yet, yeah, my biggest fear is a painful death. Second is needles. Flesh Eater! <laughs> Banshees feast upon the organs of the living. Their ethereal bodies have no desire for fruit or vegetables. Iron Aversion. Iron is lethal to banshees. They cannot bear it or wield it. They cannot bear to wield it. They cannot bear to wear it. Not not just wield. Immat immaterial. Someone explain how to pronounce that in the comments. I think I might be dyslexic. Being incorporeal does not come without consequence. Banshees have half the health a living person would have. Ah, in matter. I'm not going to try anymore. Demons. Demons? <laughs> Why did I sound so southern? Demons are evil servants of Satan. <laughs> wow, I've been called that one. <laughs> one too many times. <laughs> This gives them numerous advantages, but also can be their downfall. <laughs> Diamond Pirate! <laughs>
I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just the way it's spelled. <laughs> Name! <laughs> Use with your secondary power key. <laughs> Imbued with Satan's power, the daemon. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I laugh at every time. <laughs> Can release a burst of hell's energy on command. Triggered by the secondary power key. Hellborn. <laughs> when you've lived in the depths of hell, a lick of fire is nothing to you. Daemon. <laughs> immune to fire damage carnivore uh, I'm just gonna say it how I think it should be pronounced and stop reading it like that cause I'm gonna be wheezing throughout this entire video and it's gonna be like half an hour and it's still on this okay let's just a demon's bloodlust is insatiable wow I, um, I better give a warning on this one we read about demons <laughs> And with bloodlust, um, okay. Yeah, this is a language one. <laughs> Sorry, bad, I stole your thing, but th this is language, okay? It is insatiable. If it isn't the flesh of an animal, it's worthless. <sighs> hmm. Okay. Well, the vegan teacher is gonna have a field day with this one. Unholy deal. Demons can exchange some of their health for increased strength on account of the devil's influence. Triggered by pressing G. Or your initial power key. Whatever you have it set to. I just keep it on G because that's basic. Hydrophobe. When you've lived in lava your whole life, water seems quite scalding. Demons are damaged by being in water. Demons do not receive the positive effects from potions, such as regeneration or instant health, because they are impure. <laughs> Overworld weakness. As an agent of hell, demons are not accustomed to the mobs of the overworld and take more damage from them. When I had my mouse like this, I <laughs> my mind said, are not accustomed to the moss. <laughs> the moss of the overworld, yes. <laughs> demons fear me. <laughs> Name <laughs> The Fae <laughs> Beings of magic, Fae's are capable of far more than regular humans. Whether that is a blessing or a curse is it's for you to decide. One sec, I, I need a text catch just about this. They love hearing about the Fae. Alright, if Cactus joins, then they'll read this. If not, then hmm, no skin off my back. <sighs> Beings of magic, Fae's are capable of far more than regular humans. Whether that is a blessing or a curse, that is up for you to decide. They have levitation. Fae's are known for their ability to levitate. Press your initial power key and you will begin to hover. Magic resistance. As magical creatures themselves, Fae's take less magic damage compared to other creatures. Regeneration. Fae's are magic creatures. Press your secondary power key and you will regenerate health for a short period, at the cost of your hunger. It isn't, isn't that just how it isn't that just how it is normally? And, or am I getting that wrong? I've been playing for ten years, I swear. Allure. Fays are naturally alluring. Unfortunately, this means that mobs will pursue them from, fur from far further away than they would other creatures. Diminutive. It is rare for a fae to break five feet in height. They are small creatures, even smaller than the Weasley Goblins. 
finally one I'm taller than. <laughs> I'm 5'1". Iron aversion. Iron inhibits phase powers. It is unbearable for them to wear it. Ooh, necromancy. I'm sorry, this video is probably going to get age restricted. <laughs> We're talking about blood loss, demons, now, necro ne now necromancy. If this doesn't get age restricted, I'm gonna be shocked. Mages learned in the art of raising the dead. Necromancers can raise an army from nothing. However, this morbid relationship with death comes with consequences. Hellraiser. At will, a necromancer can raise a circle of skeletons. Blocking projectiles and damaging other opponents. Unfortunately, it only lasts for a short time. <sighs> Resilient. Learned about death. Like learning about death goes a long way towards avoiding it. Necromancers have increased health. Impervious. The study of death has made necromancers immune to poison, wither, and instant damage. Unfortunately, this also means they do not receive the positive effects from regeneration and instant health. Poor reputation. Unfortunately, students of the dark arts are feared by the general populace. Villagers will refuse to trade with necromancers, and iron golems will attack them on sight. <laughs> this does, however, come with the bonus that they am are accepted amongst the ranks of pillagers. Wow, I have been looking for a character like that for a while. Thank you. There is one thing that I want to do so badly, but I have not been able to find a way to make it happen. That is a series where I am the child of the pillagers, and I'm accepted amongst their ranks. And I found it! Black Thumb. Necromancers only work with death. They cannot harvest any crops. They wilt at their deathly touch. Disturbed. Learning the art of necromancy is traumatizing. Necromancers cannot sleep. Too scared of, to dream of what they wish they did not. But the wife is me. Unguarded. Enveloping oneself in the arcane leaves you open to attack in the physical realm. Most mobs deal more damage to necromancers. Alright, before we keep reading, I'm gonna see how many we've got left until the end of the video. We've got 38 more. <laughs> Cannot wait to find that out. Alright, the Paladin. Also, to all of the D&D &D side of YouTube that has just joined the chat, hello. I'd love to play with you, but you need to find your own DM. I have so many characters, it is unreal. DM me on Twitter if you're interested. No, they're not named Moss. Although I can play Moss in a D&D campaign if you want. I already have the character sheet written up. Their stats are so good! Except for intelligence, that's their dumb stat. <laughs> <sighs> Soldiers of the Lord, paladins excel in combat against the world's foul undead creatures. However, their holiness leaves them vulnerable to attack from these very same beings. <laughs> Holy fire, as a servant of the Lord. Wow, this is really going to trigger my religious trauma. Okay. 
As a servant of the Lord, undead creatures cannot bear the touch of a paladin, and combust when hit. Holy instruments. An axe in the hands of a paladin is a dangerous weapon. All axes deal increased damage, but swords deal less damage. Leech. Every kill regenerates a heart of a paladin's health. Holy curse. As a servant of the Lord, paladins cannot bear to be in contact with impure beings such as undead mobs and take more damage from them. Well built, walking around in heavy armor all day is a chore. Paladins need more food to sustain themselves. <sighs> Alright. Just put on a voice and you'll everything will be okay. Anyway, plague victim. Carrier of the plague. It it affects the victim's daily life, yet does not kill them. Used correctly, it can be a powerful weapon against their foes. Foul aura. Plague-carrying fleas swarm the victim. Being in the general vicinity of them is not beneficial for one's health. <laughs> plague immunity. Although the plague affects the carrier, they do not suffer the burnt. Uh, they do not suffer the brunt of, of its symptoms. Carriers are immune to poison and wither. Risk of transmission. Every contact with a plague victim is a 50-50 on whether you will contract the disease or not. Your opponents best pray that they get luck. That makes me wonder about the luck. That just makes me wonder. How does the luck affect, affect a plague victim? Or someone who's touching a plague victim? Th there is a luck effect in the game, I think. Right? Or is that just a fishing thing? Or is that just a different version entirely? I'm not that well vamped on that. But anyway. Contagious. The plague is highly contagious. Villagers will refuse to trade with you out of fear of contracting the plague. Insomniac. The horrible welts make sleep impossible for carriers of the plague to sleep. Sensitive skin. The plague causes welts and lesions upon the skin, which are tender and painful to touch. As a result, victims cannot wear armor for the pain it causes. Yeah, if I had known I would be reading this, I promise you I would have put a trigger warning. But anyway, skin and bones. The plague causes rapid muscle atrophy, resulting in reduced health and speed. I am not excited to play this, but I will put a trigger warning on that video. Ooh, Siren! Sirens have an ensnaring beauty and evil nature. Their irresistible beauty being the downfall of many a sailor. It's up to you to use this power to its full advantage. Siren Song. Sirens are known for their alluring calls. Press G to make all the mobs around you neutral until hit. Does not apply to bosses, for obvious reasons. <sighs> Amphib Amphibious. Sirens, being a subset of merpeople, can survive in water and swim with increased speed. Also, cannot wait for the nether for this one. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Sirens have regenerative powers, which are at full force when they are in water. Out of your depth. Although sirens can survive just fine on land, it is not their natural environment. As such, their regenerative abilities do not apply, and any damage taken can only be healed with potions. Honestly, sounds kind of fun. Can't wait. While sirens can regenerate their bodies, they are weak to blunt force. Melee attacks do more damage to them. <sighs> Flammable. Sirens and fire do not mix well. Any contact with flames results in instant death. <laughs> Ooh, this is going to be a fun challenge for the nether. <laughs> we already know how that one's going to end. <laughs> Which probably makes something stupid. Probably will not make it to the nether. 
Be sure to watch your step in the nether. <laughs> water vision. Sirens have superior underwater vision than other creatures. <sighs> Werewolf. Ferocious animals or people with a misunderstood condition. A werewolf can be either. Which path will you choose? A lycanthropy. The condition which causes werewolves to turn to a wolf at night has the effect of increasing a person's strength, stature, and health. Carnivore. Wolves eat, werewolves eat like a wolf, even when not transformed. The only food they can eat is meat. Silver aversion. Werewolves are very weak to silver. They cannot bear to wear it. Iron axe is silver. Wow, wh what is the hate on iron? It's not that bad. Okay, it, it's not that bad in ore, guys. W what is the hate? <laughs> Drained. Increases prowess at night. Does unfortunately comes with consequences. In daytime, your health and strength are reduced. Insatiable hunger. Werewolves are constantly looking for their next meal. Their appetite is much greater than average. Bas uh, I feel like I'm going to summon a demon if I attempt to read that, so... Descendants from the legendary basilisks. Ba Baskaliskians. Yeah, Baskaliskian. Are able to breathe poison. Poison breath. You can breathe a poison ball, causing poison to everything within radius. It's just your it's just your initial power key. Dragon scales. You possess the scales of a dragon, giving you giving you protection. Don't ask me why it's not basilisk scales cuz I don't know. I don't think they're the same creatures. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. I love learning more about dragons. Carnivore. Your diet is restricted to meat. You can't eat vegetables. Hot-blooded. Due to your hot body, <laughs> yes, that's a comment towards you. Unless you're uncomfortable with that, then it's not. Due to your hot body, v venom burn, venoms burn up, making you immune to poison and hunger status effects. Hmm. Large appetite. You exhaust much quicker than others, thus requiring you to eat more. <sighs> you have snake-like features on your head. From your snake ancestors. Cycloptian. The cyclop the cyclop the cycloptian often have trouble seeing. But their physical abilities are extraordinary. Blurry vision. Your eyesight isn't very good, making it harder to see things. Giant, you are much bigger than most. But are stronger too. As and are stronger too as a result. Claustrophobia. Being somewhere with a low ceiling for too long will weaken you and make you slower. Acrobatics. You never take fall damage, no matter which height you fall. Large appetite. You exhaust much quicker than others, thus requiring you to eat more. Brittle bones. You take more damage from falling and flying into blocks. But you, you don't take fall damage. Th that, that's like the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> you're strong enough to break natural stones without using a pickaxe with your strong arms. Endurian. One sec. I'm a tweeted. Hmm. Dang it. I was holding. Never mind. It's only for mutuals. Born as children of the Ender Dragon. And Endurians are capable of teleporting, but are vulnerable to water. Children of the Ender Dragon. <laughs> Teleportation. Whenever you want, you may throw an Ender Pearl, which deals no damage, allowing you to teleport. Hydrophobia. You receive damage over time when while in contact with water. You're afraid of pumpkins for good reason, because you're scared of the gourds. I cannot wait to find out the good reason, though, because I don't know it. <laughs> Slender body. 
you can reach blocks and entities further away. As a reference to Slenderman, not just being thin, okay? Shroomatid, an invasive mushroom species. Shroomatai are hard to kill and are you're at home in the dark, making them perfect for stealth attacks. Spores. Your spores are poisonous, giving you a chance to critically wound something when you hit it. Plant-like biology. Your plant-like construct causes you to die after being absorbed after absorbing too much water. Lightweight. Because you're a mushroom, you're lighter. Because you're lighter, you take no fall damage. Shroom limbs. Because you're a mushroom, your arms cannot wield a shield. Mushroom. Well, finally, something unique. Mushroom vision. Due to your ancestors not having eyes, you can use other senses to locate your surroundings. Ah, my neck. Invasive species. As you are an invasive species, you're naturally hard to kill. This sounds so much like the character moss. Underground inhabitant. Due to being in the nether or underground primarily, you're better at mining, but slower on the surface. Alright, finally. Large appetite. You exhaust much quicker than others, thus requiring you to eat more. If anyone's wondering why I said finally to, it's just something that's not moss. Burning wrath. When on fire, you deal additional damage with your attacks. Hello, Florida man. Nether inhabitant, your natural spawn will be in the nether. Cannot wait. <laughs> Honestly, cannot wait. <laughs> I love the nether. It's my favorite dimension. Rogian. The Rogian are a subspecies of humans. They're enhanced by redstone at the cost of their humanity <laughs> over time. Robotic eye. Your robotic implants allow you to see in the dark. Half organic. You're half organic, making fire more dangerous, but you run more efficiently. Weighted frame. Your weighted body makes it impossible to swim or use an elytra. Your body and mind are enhanced by redstone, making you stronger and faster. Human corrosion. You gradually lose your humanity until you become a nesigy. I don't know what that is. Tank. As you are enhanced by redstone, your defense is also enhanced. Powered. You are able to consume redstone to regenerate energy. And my favorite of them all. Whatever this is, I, I do not know how to pronounce that. But it is a glitched part. Megalodon. These creatures have been said to be extinct. Fins. Your underwater speed is increased. Aqua affinity. You may break blocks underwater as others do on land. Oh, that's what that is! I always wondered! I used to think it had something to do with water breathing. Until this very moment. But no, it means mining! Thank you! <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Headphone warning now. The, I mean, language. Ugh. Language. <sighs> uh, this video is already getting age restricted. Who cares? Wet eyes. Toggle with G. Your vision underwater is perfect. Gills. I'm not the only one that can read that, that can't read that, right? One sec, I'm gonna just... Okay, nope, it's not glitched. I just cannot read. Big sized. You are bigger than the average human. Slime! Green blobs of jello that bounce all around. Bouncy. All blocks act like slime blocks. Wow, that, that will probably be the most fun and frustrating thing to come out of this series.
turn your food points into small slime to defend you with your split ability <laughs> with your initial power like yada yada you, you, you understand small weakness when at less than two hearts you deal almost no damage but your attacks have stronger knockback acrobatics you never take fall damage no matter which height you fall Harpnian. The Harpnians control the skies, but they don't fare so well once they're grounded. Sharp feathers. You have two feathers on your head. Okay. Feather shot. You can detach your feathers and shoot them, causing harm to, who, uh, to whomever it hits. Harpnian wings. You have the wings of a Harpnian. A aerial combatant, you deal substantially more damage while in a light drift flight. Carnivore, your diet is restricted to meat. You can't eat vegetables. Acrobatics, you never take fall damage no matter which height you fall. Also, kids, eat your vegetables. Fragile, you have three less hearts of health than humans. Unwieldy, the way your hands are formed provide no way of holding a shield upright strong ankles you're able to jump higher while s while jump while jumping while sprinting wait by jumping while sprinting oviparous still have not learned how to pronounce it whenever you wake up in the morning you lay an egg feathered head your head is has feathers attached to it causing you to not be able to equip any helmet Light wings. Your wings are too light to carry a heavy chest plate. Meat eater. You're immune to hunger, and eating raw meat gives more nourishment. Fox. The TBF version. Don't know what that means, but... Mm. The smallest of the Canadae. The fox is a cunning yet playful creature. Fox pounce. Pressing your active key makes you jump really high and negate fall damage for a moment. You can use this as a mid-air jump, but beware your landing. Fox side, you're the smallest of the Canadi. You have less health and do less melee damage, but you can easily slip through thorny bushes and like berry bushes with your slim frame. Omnivore. All food is decent for your diet. Fox delights, except for chicken and berries. You really like chicken and berries. And get bonuses from food that contain them. Small stature. Due to your smaller size, you have less health and do less base damage. TFB Lion. A much larger fillet day. The lion is a prideful and strong feline. Lions roar! Use your active key to roar! This will stun all non-players near you for a moment, and they will attack slower for a short bit. Lion size. You're a bit larger than the average creature. Large stature. Due to your larger size, you have more health and attack power. Savannah Cat. The savanna is your preferred territory. You can get a boost of speed while in any savanna biome. Large Carnivore. You primarily eat meat, but due to your size, you need a lot more food than normal creatures. Non-meat and mixed foods will fill you even less. I do not know if you can eat them or not with large carnivore, but I don't think you can with basic carnivore. Heavyweight fall. Being much larger and heavier, bigger falls are much more dangerous. Prideful. Without your pride close by, you exhaust faster. Adopt a pride. Other players and team cat count. The lynx is a large pod. Your tough fillet day. Lynx perch. Pressing your active key boosts your jump for a few seconds and turns you invisible letting you ascend to a scouting perch quickly and quietly. Lynx size. You're a somewhat smaller feline. But yeah, the TFB lynx, if I didn't already say that. Don't know if I did.
Tiger Cat, you're built for lighter snowy forest areas. You move faster while in tiger biomes. Snow adapted, your coat is adapted to the snow. Well, it shows you don't. Probably might down. You will not take freezing damage in snow. Lightweight fall, being so small and light, you take, you can take far, you can fall farther before taking damage. Small stature, due to your smaller size, you have less health and do less base damage. Hyper carnivore, your diet is mostly meat. Non meat will be very filling, and mixed foods are slightly better. TFB ocelot, the smallest fillet. Ocelots are in that are in depth nighttime hunters. Senses of the ocelot. Ocelots hunt and stalk prey by tracking scents. Press your active key to go invisible for a short time and highlight all the creatures around you. Ocelot size. You're quite a small fillet. Ocelot vision. Ocelots are nocturnal creatures and can see much better in the dark. Lightweight fall. Being so small and light, you can fall farther before taking damage. Hyper carnivore. Your diet is mostly meat. Non meats will barely be filling, and mixed foods are slightly better. Fish lover. You love fish a whole lot. Anything with fish is more filling and satisfying. Very small stature. Due to your fairly small size, you have much less health and do much less base damage. Alright, how many left? Alright. I know what I said about earlier, but I kind of really want to get back to listening to my music, and I'm actually kind of bored of being alone. I also kind of want to write. So... I think I'm going to end it off with the Megabat, and we will pick it up with the Parrot next time. So, yeah. Sorry for the disappointment, but if I continue reading these, it's going to be an hour long, and I don't want to do that. So, these medium si so TFB, Megabat. These medium-sized sure. Chiroptera, often seen at night, can be found all over. Big bat flight. Anyway. Big bat flight. Hold your active key to slowly fly upward. You can still take falling damage. Hmm. Echolocation. Contrary to popular belief, you don't have bad eyesight. But your echolocation definitely helps you see things even better. Bat vision. Bats are nocturnal creatures and can see in the dark. Bat size. You're a medium bat. You're a medium sized whatever. I do not know how to pronounce it, so I'm not going to try again. I'll probably end up doing a Beetlejuice kind of thing. Lightweight fall. Being so small and light. You can fall farther before taking damage. Small stature. Due to your smaller size, you have less health and do less base damage. And frugivore. Your diet is primarily fruits, seeds, and nuts. All other plants and non-meats are acceptable. Meats don't fill you. And mixed foods are mediocre. Alright, well, that was another set of origins. Now, um, I'm going to go watch Jay Schlatt, listen to some music, write a fan fiction I'm working on. Well, it's not a fan fiction, it's an original story with original characters. But characters from other series do make some cameos, so... I guess you could say it's a fan fiction, but it's definitely not. <laughs> it's just a story. I, I don't know what to call it. It's not an original concept, it's from someone else, but there's no media out like it.
Except maybe D and D. But anyway, I'm gonna let my family know that I'm done recording. I hope you all have a great day, and remember, stream Poltergeist on Friday. It drops. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.